Welcome. In this video, we'll learn about loops in Python. Loop can execute a section of code multiple times. There are two types of loop in Python, while, and for. While loop executes the code till some condition is satisfied, that is, till true is passed. Then we have for loop. For loops are used to iterate of some sequence or iterable. First we'll learn about while loop. While loop executes a code block till some condition is satisfied. While loop starts with while keyword, followed by a boolean value. We can pass a boolean value or integer value directly, or, an expression which evaluates to boolean or integer value. If integer is passed, loop executes till value of integer is more than zero. All the statements inside a loop, needs to be indented, that is, it needs to be tabbed left, once. This is simple example of while loop. In here we define an integer variable, a with value 10. Then we use while loop, which will iterate till a is more than 5. We first statement we iterate is print, variable a, is more than 5. Then we decrease value of a by 1. This step is important, it will make our condition to become false, if not kept, our loop will execute infinitely. Loop runs till value of a is more than 5, so, numbers up to 6 are printed. When value of a becomes 5, our condition, a greater than 5 becomes false, so loop terminates, therefore, 5 more than 5 is not printed. Now, in this next example, instead of passing boolean value with while keyword, we'll pass an integer, a, which have initial value 10. We'll print value of a in the loop, and decrement its value. As said earlier, statements inside loop will iterate, till a is greater than 0, or else loop will terminate. So, when value of a becomes 0, loop terminates, and 0 more than 0 will not be printed. Now, we will look at another built-in function, range. Range function is used to generate sequence of numbers in Python. We can then use for loop to iterate over the sequence. Range function takes three parameter, start, end, step. Sequence will start from the value passed in start parameter, and stop before value passed in end parameter, by taking, step parameter value, number of steps at a time. Range function will return an object, which will generate sequence of number, but to do that, you need to iterate over that object. We can also pass that object in list method, which will iterate over the object, and add all the number in list, and return that list. Then we can print that list to view the sequence. Here in first line, we call the range function by passing start and end parameter as 0 and 5. Then, in next line we call the function with start, end, and step parameter value as 0, 20 and 3 respectively. In last line we call range function by passing only one value 10. In this case, 10 will be assigned to end parameter, and so, start and end parameter will take their default value, that is, 0 and 1 respectively. In our first range function call, our end parameter is 5, so our sequence of number stops at 4. Then in second call, we have step parameter 3, so our sequence jumps 3 steps at a time. In last function call, we pass single integer value, 10, which is assigned to end, so our sequence go up to 9 and stops. Now, we'll look at for loop in Python. For loop can be used to iterator over a sequence of number. Syntax of for loop is, for keyword followed by variable name, in, sequence. Here sequence can be any object which is iterable. Variable will take one value at a time from sequence, so for each item in sequence, for will run once. In this example, we first assign a list with string, to variable L. Then we iterate over list L one by one, using for loop, by assigning each value present in the list, to variable E. Then we print variable E inside the loop. As output, each string in the list is printed. Now let's add some more integers in the list and execute the code again. So using for loop, we can easily iterate over objects present in the list. In this example, we'll use range function to generate a sequence of numbers, which start from 5 and end before 30, with step size 2. 
then we'll use for loop to iterate over that sequence, and print each element. In the print function which is present in for loop, we pass a comma as end parameter, so we'll get comma separate values on same line. You can see, we get commas between each number which is printed. To change it, we'll change end parameter value. Let's try with space and execute the code, we'll get integers separate by space. We'll also try with dash, to get separate integers with dash when we execute the code. Now, we'll learn about break and continue keyword. Break is used to terminate the loop, so, if break keyword is encountered in any loop, no further execution of statement or iteration takes place, and execution of statement below for loop continues. Continue keyword is used to skip the further execution of current iteration, and jump to next iteration. If continue is encountered in a loop, further statements present inside the loop, will not be executed, and execution will go to next iteration of the loop. In this example, we iterate over sequence of 10 numbers, from 0 to 9. And in each iteration, we print the number, and check, if number is equal to 7 if yes, then terminate the loop using break keyword. Notice, despite our sequence having integers up to 9, integers up to 7 is only printed. This example is similar to previous one, but in here, instead of breaking the loop if i is equal to 7, we continue or to next iteration. Notice number 7 is not printed in the sequence because of continue keyword. In nested loop, if break is encountered, then, most recent loop will be terminated. In this example, we have two nested loops, first goes from 0 to 3 and second goes from 0 to 4. In second loop, if j is 2, then, break keyword will be executed. In output of this code, notice, despite out inner loop iterating up to 4, value printed is only 0 and 1, because, if j is 2, inner loop is terminated, and outer loop's execution is continued.